the members of the International Space Station crew are now all veteran space flyers and all eager for the opportunity to make a contribution to the future of human exploration. Dr. Oleg Kotov is a native of Simferopol in what is now Ukraine. But as the son of a Soviet military officer, he grew up all over Russia and had his sights set on the military for his own career by the time he finished high school in Moscow. I decided to become uh, a military officer as well, like my father, my grandfather. However, I kept dreaming about space, and while I was, I had to select my major, I was very careful about it, and I became a military surgeon in the area of aerospace medicine. After graduation from the Kirov Military Medical Academy, Kotov went to work at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center as a doctor studying altitude physiology and the effects of spaceflight on the human body. At the same time, he studied diagnostics and methods of pilot selection and also earned a degree in patenting. In 1996, he entered Air Force Pilot School and was selected for cosmonaut training. He made his first spaceflight in 2007 and completed two spacewalks as a flight engineer on Expedition 15. He did another EVA during Expedition 22 before becoming commander of the station for Expedition 23 in 2010. Kotov then served as deputy chief of the GCTC before starting training for this mission, which presented another opportunity to fulfill the human instinct to learn new things. It's a desire to understand the world around you, to expand the area where we live, to explore the space, Mars, Moon, other star systems. So it's a question about a desire to learn something new. Dr. Sergei Rezansky is a rarity among Russian cosmonauts, one who was born and raised in Moscow. As the son of engineers and a grandson of Mikhail Rezansky, a leading Soviet engineer specializing in missile and spacecraft radio guidance, Rezansky had his sights set on a career in science at a young age. When I was a child, I wanted to become a biologist. So I was studying in a specialized school where we were majoring in biology, so I knew that I would be a scientist. I think I knew that since I was in the sixth grade. I knew that I would uh, try to go to the Moscow State University. Where he graduated with a degree in biochemistry and went straight to work at the Institute for Biomedical Problems at the Russian Academy of Sciences. His specialization in ways to prevent the adverse effects caused by the absence of gravity got him involved in the space industry and sparked an interest in becoming a cosmonaut himself. In 2003, he was selected to join IBMP's Cosmonaut Corps and completed basic training at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. In 2006, he earned his doctorate in physiology and space medicine. And in 2009, he was crew commander in a 105-day-long isolation experiment known as Mars 500. By 2010, he was certified as a GCTC test cosmonaut, which he calls the most interesting job in the world because it combines so many things. Anything you can think of is combined by this profession. And being part of this industry is very interesting. You have new technologies, new approaches, and you're always on the edge, so to say. You always know the latest developments. It's very interesting to live this life. It's very interesting to train for this life. That's why I became a cosmonaut. U.S. Air Force Colonel Mike Hopkins is from South Central Missouri, born in Lebanon and raised a few miles away on a farm outside Richland. He credits his small town upbringing for his getting the chance to try everything in high school, not only football and other sports, but all school activities, and for developing his interest in engineering. My father was a pilot in the Marines back in the early 60s. Uh, he flew A4s, and so there was aviation in, in my family. So that certainly uh, piqued my interest in it and uh, my interest in space. Uh, my desire to become an astronaut uh, started back in high school. 
Hopkins headed to the University of Illinois to study aerospace engineering. He also walked on to the football team and ended up as a starter and a team captain by the time he graduated with his bachelor's in aerospace engineering and a commission in the Air Force earned through the ROTC. After finishing a master's in aerospace engineering at Stanford, Hopkins began his Air Force career in a laboratory working on space systems technologies. Then he moved on to become a flight test engineer, even spending time as an exchange officer at the Canadian Flight Test Center in Alberta. In 2002, Hopkins won a scholarship to study political science in Italy, after which he was assigned to work in acquisitions at the Pentagon, and then as a special assistant to the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the job he had when he was selected as an astronaut in 2009. He's the first member of his astronaut class to fly in space and eager to use his mission to try to help satisfy our desire to learn. Uh, humans are always striving for, for knowledge, for knowing what's beyond the hill, for knowing how each little thing works in, in our world, um, whether it's uh, the human itself, whether it's anything within biology, the physical world, uh, all of that, we, we have this desire to know as much as we can about that. And, and the space station, the International Space Station, fits right into that. Dr. Koichi Wakata was born and raised in Saitama, a bedroom community of Tokyo. He remembers watching the first moon landing on television and wishing he could fly in space. But since there were no Japanese astronauts then, he put the dream aside as impractical. But he had other interests, including baseball and airplanes. I was very fascinated uh, uh, by airplanes ever since I was a small boy and I always want to, uh, wanted to become an engineer or a pilot uh, to, to make and fly um, an airplane. Wakata pursued that dream at Kyushu University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering and a master's in applied mechanics, and then started his career as a structural engineer for Japan Airlines. Two years later, when Japan's space agency advertised for astronaut candidates, Wakata applied and was selected in 1992 to begin astronaut training at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. In 1996, he was Japan's first ever space shuttle mission specialist on a flight where he ran the shuttle's robot arm to deploy and retrieve satellites. In 2000, he used his robotics expertise again on the shuttle flight that installed the Z-1 truss and a pressurized mating adapter on the International Space Station. After he finished his doctorate in aeronautical engineering from Kyushu University in 2004, he completed training in Russia as a Soyuz spacecraft flight engineer, and then in 2009 became Japan's first space station crew member as a part of expeditions 18, 19, and 20, and expanded his robotics repertoire to include Canadarm2, Dexter, and the robotic arm on Japan's Kibo Laboratory module. He's eager to keep doing what he can to prepare the way for future exploration and improve life on Earth. I think we can gain uh, new knowledge, new technologies that we benefit uh, in our daily life uh, on the ground by going to space. And also, I strongly believe a uh, human space program is a vehicle um, for the survival of human species. Michael Turin was born in Kolomna, Russia, an historical town outside Moscow. But he lived in many places around the country, growing up in a military family. His interest in spaceflight did not focus on becoming a cosmonaut himself. I did not um, have a period of my life when I was dreaming and doing all, my, all I could, um, overcoming difficulties to become a cosmonaut. I just loved this um, area. And he focused on getting as close to it as he could. Turin earned a degree in engineering from the Moscow Aviation Institute and went right to work for the Rocket Space Corporation Energia as an engineer, first specializing in ballistics and software development and later in methods of training cosmonauts, methods he usually tried out on himself first. After nine years on the job, he was selected to join the Cosmonaut Corps. Turin made three spacewalks during his first trip to the International Space Station in 2001 as a flight engineer on Expedition 3. 
and two more EVAs as flight engineer on Expedition 14 in 2006 and 2007. He's pleased to be contributing to physiological research that will prepare humans for future space exploration, and even more interested in how some of the psychological results will be applied on Earth. They can be used not just in uh, space exploration, but can be propagated and applied uh, to human relations uh, in general, and uh, much more in demand, in demand in various areas uh, of our uh, human activity, human life. Rick Mastracchio is a native of Waterbury, Connecticut and grew up there in the 1960s interested in the space program, but not with the idea that he'd ever fly in space himself. When I was a small kid, I didn't know you could even be an astronaut. It never occurred to me I could be an astronaut someday. But I was always interested in math and science. I was always interested when the teacher spoke about uh, aviation-related topics or space science-related topics You know, when I was in grade school. He took those interests to the University of Connecticut, the first person in his family ever to go to college, and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering and computer science, which got him a job at Hamilton Standard developing guidance and flight control systems while he finished a Master's of Science in electrical engineering at Rensselaer Polytechnic. At that time, he saw an ad from NASA looking for new astronauts and decided to apply. What he got was a job offer from Rockwell to work in shuttle operations, and he moved to Houston in 1987. Three years later, he joined NASA as an engineer specializing in software development, then became a flight controller in ascent and entry guidance and procedures, and was selected as an astronaut in 1996 after nine years of applying. His first space shuttle flight was the 2000 mission that outfitted the International Space Station's new Zvezda module for its first permanent crew. He made three spacewalks during his second trip to the station in 2007 on a mission that delivered a truss segment and a new gyroscope, and three more EVAs on a 2010 resupply mission. He sees this station as a means to support inevitable exploration well beyond the neighborhood of this blue planet. We are meant to explore, we being the people here on this planet Earth. We want to go out and see what's out there. We want to know more about things. And we can't just do that through robotic systems. We have to send people to see things up close and personal.